Get ready to match the stars. Robert Urich. Brett Summer. Gary Vergoff. Jamie Lynn Bauer. Richard Dawson. And Fanny Fly. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Rayburn. If you hadn't whistled for me, it would have hurt my feelings. <laughs> I love you in teal blue. Yes, it is. Oh, they whistled for you, yeah. didn't they? And they That's whistled for blue. her, too, didn't they? <laughs> was teal green. Thank you very much. <laughs> and what have they done for you, Fanny? What have they done? It's what they're going to do. <laughs> Listen, we have some unfinished business. You had... Tell us about this play you're doing. Oh, yes, I'm opening tonight in Sullivan, Illinois, in a play called The Tor Torchbearers. What is that all about? It's about an amateur theatrical group, not unlike this panel. And, uh, <laughs> speak for yourself, dear. I'm sorry I asked, <laughs> but good luck anyway. You didn't tell Now let's me say hello to our two that. players, yes. Lynn Taylor and Karen Schuster. What do you say? How are you? Lynn is our current champ. She has got a total of $1,300 to her credit. And now we are meeting, uh, and going, she's going to be challenged by Karen Schuster, and we're meeting her for the first time, and we welcome her and ask her to tell us a little bit about herself. I'm a student at UCLA in hospital administration working on my master's, and I'm presently working in a hospital doing an internship, and I'm single and up for grabs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas. Oh I wonder if... No Charge! Charge! I wonder... If I wonder if she would mind if, uh, if I grabbed her. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing personal. Get your own show, Gary. <laughs> this Good luck my to show? you, Karen. Thank We're you. delighted to have you with us, and I'll push this button and show you those, and I can't do anything with them now because <laughs> I pushed a button too soon, didn't I? But I tell you what we are going to do. We're going to give you a commercial message the likes of which you will never forget. <laughs> well, you won't even join it. Are you ready? We are ready. Now, Karen, we ask you to make a selection. It's up to you, A or B? B, please. B it is. Here we go. New game everybody plays. <coughs> Donald got so drunk at the how bowling... How drunk did he get? <laughs> okay, I'll tell you how drunk he got. Almost as much. He got so drunk at the bowling alley that instead of using a bowling ball, he tried to knock down the pins with his blank. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Gina? Da, 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 da. Gina, tell that to me one more time, because I love Donald, it when you talk. Donald got so drunk at the bowling alley that instead of using a bowling ball, he tried to knock down the pins with his blank. Oh, there are so many wonderful choices, aren't there? Yes. You look very chic today, my dear. Thank with you. A little butch, but yes. chic. <laughs> <laughs> Having difficulty, my yes, child. I am. Yes, I can be involved. Is there in some now, way I can be of oh, service to you? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> All right, that's an inspiration Thank for you. It is, it is, it is. Okay, I'm coming. Ready, Gary? Yo. Okay. Here we go. Karen. Donald got so drunk at the bowling alley that instead of using a bowling ball, he tried to knock down the pins with his blank. With his breath. His breath. With his breath, she said. Well, I've, I've never just... heard. I, I just can't imagine that. Let me think. Now, wait a minute. Let me think about that minute. See? He stands as a foul line is here. That? You know the song. He goes down there and says, Falls on your breath. <laughs> Never worked, Gene, Karen. It's That's the most ridiculous thing ever. Heard. It's a swimming term. It's a breath strike. <laughs> a breath strike. <laughs> oh! oh. oh. Going downhill. Richard. I just wanted you to get up clean. <laughs> All right, Bob, go. It was uh, Donald and Stella Kowalski, so he knocked the pins down with his wife. With his wife. <laughs> Threw his wife down the alley. Got a strike. What do you say, Brett? Karen will learn that cleverness does not go over big on this boat. <laughs> The smart answers are never the ones that match. I said he knocked down with his head. Hade. His hade. 
right, Fanny. <laughs> I don't know why, like Fanny. I don't know why everybody's making fun of her answer. I thought I, th- I mean that's you know the saying. You could have knocked me over with his breath. I'm oh like, yeah, that. of course. So I said wife. Wife. <laughs> Karen is looking for the answer, Brett. He got so drunk, he tried to knock down the pins with his breath. What do you say, Jamie? I think breath is a wonderful answer, but <clears throat> since I didn't put head, I put car keys. Car keys. <laughs> you guys would do Wait that a minute. Easy. You're faking it, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> You're cheering You give these rock losers <laughs> no, cheering I know, I know. It's wonderful. You're keep easily up, influenced by a pretty face, aren't you? It's great. I yeah. love it. Now, Richard. <laughs> car keys. Car keys. That's what you <laughs> <laughs> now, Sheldon. Yes, I'm astounded also. You drive? <laughs> Occasionally. Give us ten minutes, just start, so we can get out of the car. Boy. That's all I beg. I said wife. Wife. Okay. Right down the alley. Karen is looking for the answer, Brett. Fanny, what do you offer? I said his wife's head. <laughs> his wife's head. <laughs> Why would you, Kate, throw now, the whole thing there? Yeah, we've got your first round right. question. Are you ready for it? I think so. Okay, here we go. Fanny Flagg was a precocious little girl. How precocious was she? <laughs> I tell you, on her 10th birthday, she blanked her training bra. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> on her 10th birthday, she blanked her training bra. Okay. Brett's gonna say something so horrible. Oh, Don, I'd never turn on you just because you turn on me. I believe in turning the other cheek. <laughs> you know me, hon. Okay, upper tier is ready. I have to get you a different chair. All right, we're ready now for Lynn Taylor. Fanny Flagg was a precocious little girl. Would you like to know how precocious she was? Yes, I would. Oh, good. On her 10th birthday, she blanked her training bra. Burned. She burned. That's an interesting answer. Robert, what do you say to that? I said she burned. Burned! <laughs> One for you, Lynn. Brett, what do you say? Bob said burn. <laughs> oh, honey, if she burned her bra, she wouldn't be able to leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said she... I knew! <laughs> I said she snapped and or broke. Broke, that's it. <laughs> Now that's the idea, Gary. She's copying me again. <laughs> she broke her, broke her training bra on her 10th birthday. What do you say to that, Jamie? I'm afraid I just copied them both. They yeah, broke it. Broke again. Yeah. Okay, and... Well, it's better than car keys any yeah, day of the right. week. <laughs> Richard? Uh, she burst it. She burst it. <laughs> she burst it. And she broke it. She's happy. Run for Start your lives! <laughs> Duck and cover! <laughs> uh, All right, Fanny, you were there. Little dignity. Uh, yeah, I must tell you, uh, we didn't even go into training. <laughs> uh, I just said broke. Just broke. 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 Okay. Broke. Broke. So that's one for you, and that's the score at the end of round one. One to nothing, and now uh, round two comes along. But first, this message for you. <laughs> round two coming up. Here we go. One to nothing to score in favor of the champ. Karen, please make your choice. I'll take A this time. A. All right. Long John Silver said, he says, I made these. Before I go out on a date, I always blank me wooden leg. <laughs> That's what I do. Always blank me wooden leg. You could do that part, sweetheart. Yes, I could. They just cut off your leg and you'd be off and running. <laughs> How is it when I'm butch? <laughs> It's what? terrific. I can't tell if the young and restless is down there or out there. Yes, they're, they're all over the place. <laughs> Everybody ready? Here we go, Karen. Long John Silver says, he says, I made ease. Before I go out on a date, I always blank me wooden leg. I always loosen. <laughs> Karen, didn't I warn you before about being clever? <laughs> you, uh... <laughs> You're going to continue your studies. Uh, <laughs> right. And uh, you're not going to try for a career in show business or <laughs> make money on a game shows or anything like that, are you, Karen? All right, here we go. She yes, says, uh, go. before I go out on a date, I always loosen me wooden leg. Mm. What did you say, Bob? I, matey, I polish me. Polish. Yeah, polish. 
Polish me leg. What do you say, lady? I say I want the same enthusiasm for my answer. Polish. Polish, yeah. Equal time. Gary? I said car keys. <laughs> Shine. Shine. Shine is a good one. All right. Now, wait a minute. She hasn't even given her dumb answer yet, yet, and you're getting excited. All right. Let me just look at it before they say it. Uh What does it say? I want you to know I'm in love with all of you. Yes. (laughs) Yes, I said I hope he does. Polish. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Oh, Go ahead. Excuse me. You're yes, that's it. Uh, all right. Thank you. Now, Richard. <laughs> it's there someplace. There it is. A remarkable record you're establishing. Yes, that's right. <laughs> You've been here two days, and so far, zip for zip. <laughs> <laughs> but you have three winos who lead a chair every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep drinking. Right. I did not say Polish. I said Polish. Oh, Polish. <laughs> You say Polish, and I say Polish. That's callable. Now, you got a match. Oh, I Fanny to stay in the game, Karen. What do you say, Fanny? Polish. Polish. So, There you go again. Karen, we'd like to wish you the very best of luck. Thank you. In your career at UCLA in the nursing profession. And uh, we hope you do well there. We've really been happy to meet you. We've got a gift for you, together with our thank. Karen Schuster. Goodbye. Here it is again. Ready? I hope so this time. Uh, This is your last chance, maybe. You never know here. We polled a recent studio audience, Lynn. We got their best response to this. Horace Blank. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500, then $250, then $100, depending on which one you match. Whom do you call on here for some help? Richard. Richard. My my agent who said, go west, young man, Horace Greeley. Horace Greeley. (laughs) Brent, what do you say? You know, I don't even know if there is such a person. Is there such a person as Horace Mann? Yes, of course. Horace Mann? Oh, of course. Yes, of course there is. Every yeah? high, there's a high school in almost every town in America, America named Horace, Horace Mann. I, you know Certainly. where my mind goes sometimes. He's a great educator. Yes, that um, was it. Gary? Gary? <laughs> well, like, again, third choice. All I can think of is Horace Heights. Horace Heights. Horace Height and his musical nights. He was a, a big Hite. band, a, a very oh, famous yeah. orchestra in that's, the 40s. That's so you've got Horace Height, Horace Mann, and Horace Greeley. I'll try Horace Greeley. Horace Greeley. That's the one that Richard gave you. We'll find out if it's up there, and if so, where. May we see... Horse what? Radish. Horse Radish. <laughs> Hold everything. <laughs> I don't mind the winos applauding (laughs) Jamie's rotten answers. But when you get your own show going out in the studio audience, I draw the line there. All right. Horace uh, Greeley is the one we're looking for. May we see the $100 response? Horace Mann. See? Very good, Brett. All right. Let's see if Horace Greeley is under the $250 response. Horace Greeley, congratulations. You got it. Okay. Now, I am going to be very embarrassed and I apologize in advance to the winos in the audience if it turns out to be Horace Radish, as you have suggested. (laughs) All right, Earl, slide it. Horace Height! Gary said that. Horace Height. Very good. Now, I ask you, would you have said Horace Height? Now, did, you, did it cross your mind? Because it, it was a three people. Okay. All right, listen, you got the $250, you're going to play for 10 times that amount, or $2,500, and you have to match one celebrity head to head exactly in order to co- collect. Which one will it be? I'll try Richard again. You'll try Richard again. Here we go. All right, face me if you would, please. Lynn, here it is, Richard, worth $2,500. Blank. Frog. Blank frog. 
He's finished. Now, Len, we ask you to give us an answer which you think will match his. What do you say to that? Blank frog. Leap frog. Leap frog. All right, Richard, she says Leapfrog will match it for 2500 What do you say? The bad news is Bullfrog. Oh, bullfrog. No. Oh. bullfrog. Now, wait a minute. How much has Lynn got? 1650 Is that all she's got? Are you sure? Are you keeping score right here? Because I can't keep it in my head. I have too many other things to think about. Plus car fare. $1,650. And you're going to have another chance at another game. And a bottle of horse And we're marriage. going to keep you up here and you keep doing it until you get it right. Now, right now, we have You are good. And we'll have this message for you and then come right back. Here we go. Going to meet a new player now. Let's all welcome John Lyben. How are you? You know Lynn Taylor? John is a very snappy dresser, isn't yes. he? Yes. Very handsome. Should we ask him to leave? <laughs> <laughs> no, John, we do welcome you and ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm presently employed as a wine salesman right now. Uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> now I understand. Now we know. Those are my boys. This, uh, those are your boys. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should apologize to Jamie. Yes, right. Okay. <laughs> You're a wine salesman. Right. I've been uh, very happily married for just a little bit over a year. Oh. Oh. Uh, well, then how do you know it's happy? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, all my spare time and weekends, I'm a wedding soloist. That's, a wedding soloist? That's where it's at. Are you yeah. a tenor? A baritone? A little bit right in between. A bigamist. A bigamist. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, that's uh, very nice. Voice in the you sing, Oh, Promise Me, that someday you and I and all that? No, you don't sing that. Well, when they ask, when they request. What, what uh, song they... do you get requested most often? Well, it, it varies. It can, it can go from the Lord's Prayer to Born to Lose. I mean, it, it all depends on who's getting married. <laughs> and, and usually it does. <laughs> we're going to quit while we're ahead, John. I hope so. <laughs> Push the button. Make a selection yeah. here. <laughs> Uh, B, please. B it is. Here it is. Mary said my <laughs> husband treats me like a tree. He blanks me every chance he gets. <laughs> Having a good oh, time, Jamie? Aren't you glad you came? Yeah. <laughs> Mary said my husband treats me like a tree. He blanks me every chance he gets. So many good ones. Just write one down. Presto. Oh, okay, dear. Right. Ready? That's a, depends on your point of view. Right in the slot there now. Well, I'm just thinking. No, it's all right. I'm waiting Perfectly for her. You can't go right. without her okay. anyway. I'm finished. Put in the slot. Here we go. John Lyben. Mary said, my husband treats me like a tree. He blanks me every chance he gets. <laughs> uh, I'll say uh, that he... Uh, <laughs> I can't what? <laughs> Sing us a Sing. tune. Oh, he uh, he waters me. <laughs> Is that your first thought? Is that your second thought? John, if I may, <laughs> born to lose. <laughs> Bob, what do you say? He said waters me. The water's terrific, but I said prunes. Oh. He prunes me. <laughs> prunes me, Brett. I said he replants me. He replants me. <laughs> Has anyone come to your first answer yet, John? <laughs> no. No. G Gary? Close. I said prunes. Prunes. <laughs> and you, my dear. What do you say about John and this tree that he treats like a woman? He blanks me every chance he gets. He said waters. Well, I think it's wonderful, but I thought something a little more sensual than that, which is prunes. Prunes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And now, Richard, it's up I to you. I knew the husband. Yes. And I knew Mary. Yes. She was six nine. Yeah. He was three foot one. Yeah. He'd stand across one side of the room. Yeah. Run at her. Right. And then climb right, right up. <laughs> Was that your first choice? <laughs> We're on the same wave. You wouldn't say it. The audience kept saying, say it, say it, say it. You wouldn't do it there. What do you say? 
Say something, Jamie. Just say anything. Hello. Anything. Who <laughs> 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 they are. Yeah. Uh, I said he trims her. He trims her. So, no score for you there, John, and your question is coming along later. Right now, this is coming your way. Here we go, and that's it, folks. You're just splendid. Thank you. Doesn't time go quickly? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, that's it. Gene Rayburn, Match Game 75. Join us next time, if you please. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 75, a Mark Goodson, Bill Tuckman production. Stay tuned for Title Tales next over most of these CBS stations.